Hello, my name is Lewis, and in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into Candida overgrowth. We're going to go into what Candida overgrowth is and how to heal it. Do you suffer from chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, headaches, skin rashes, bloating, gas, and pain or tightness in between the shoulder blade area? You may also have brain fog, mood swings, memory loss, itching, joint pain, indigestion, ulcers, sinus conditions, or cancer. Although it's not guaranteed that these symptoms are the effects of candida overgrowth, they are certainly symptoms found in people with candida overgrowth. Candida albicans is an opportunistic pathogenic yeast that is a common member of the human gut flora. It can also survive outside the body. Let's explore some of the types of people who are susceptible to Candida albicans overgrowth. Number one, people with a copper imbalance. Copper needs to be balanced correctly in order for Candida to be managed properly. The reason being is that copper is a very powerful yeast fire. Therefore, when copper is not properly utilized in the body, Candida can easily get out of balance. It is not as simple as lowering the copper in the diet Rather, a properly performed healing program is needed to ensure copper is correctly metabolized in the body and is bioavailable. Often, people have tried many candida overgrowth diets, medicines, or other techniques to reduce copper and find that none stop the problem permanently. The reason is usually because copper hasn't been properly balanced. Number two, babies, children, and adults that consume too many sweet products. Babies can be susceptible to thrush, cotton mouth and cradle cap. The reason behind this is often due to the babies being fed too many sweet foods and drinks such as fruit juices, chocolate milk, pasteurized milk and other sweet products. Children are also given way too many sugary foods and drinks ranging from soda pops to cakes, sweets, juices and more. What is terrible is that these babies and children literally grow up with a copper imbalance. This gives rise to nasty yeast infections such as chronic ear infections, dry skin and other things. These children are often raised therefore on steroid creams and toxic medication that never solve the issue permanently. This means that these chronic infections end up getting worse over time, which leads to higher dosages of these medications. This goes on and on and on, and parents never understand that the true cause is often dietary. I suffered from extreme and constant ear infections as a child. I remember the doctor once swabbing the inside of my ears and were told that my ear infections were fungal. Instead of getting my parents to change my diet, I was given more steroids and creams. I suffered like this for 20 years until I started the nutritional balancing program. Within days of massively reducing my sugar intake, I could literally hear the fungal infection in my ear start to die off. Little did I know in the beginning that true candida healing only came from copper balancing and body rejuvenation. However, it just goes to show how much candida feeds off sugars in the diet and how diet is so closely related to this common problem. Number three, vegan and vegetarian diets. People on these diets tend to accumulate toxic copper. The main reason is that supplementing the correct amount and type of zinc is extremely hard on these diets. And in general, these diets tend to be higher in sugars and carbohydrates. This creates the perfect environment for candida to grow. Number four, women generally are more susceptible to copper imbalance than men. Women's bodies in general have higher copper levels in comparison to men's. This is one of the reasons why women suffer from yeast infections more than men. Also, many women use copper-based birth controls such as the IUD and contraceptive pill. These products are high in copper and they leach into the system too much. To add to the complications of managing candida overgrowth, a variety of symptoms tend to appear for people when candida starts to die off within an individual. One common issue is getting increases of brain fog, sickness, nausea, and other horrible symptoms. The reason this happens is that candida is dying due to starvation. When this happens, the candida die-off releases toxic substances into the bloodstream. 
This problem is usually rectified if one was to eat more sugars and carbohydrates, which quickly revives the dying yeast. This causes a catch-22 situation, where the person does not want to keep going with the candida die-off reactions. To compound this problem is the fact that candida balancing will not be permanent until other issues in the body are healed, including copper imbalance, adrenal and thyroid problems and others. Meaning that even if a person can push through the candida die-off reactions, although they will often feel better on the other side, more persistence and determination is needed to then balance out copper and to rebuild the body chemistry. Many setbacks tend to happen if a person relapses in their diet, therefore. From personal experience, this happened many times. I realized that the only way for me to move forward completely was to make a powerful decision to stick to the healing regime consistently. Over time, reducing my sugar intake, removing toxins and balancing out my copper, I began to have much better candida overgrowth management, leading to permanent candida balancing. It took some time, but it was well worth the effort. Alcohol and Candida Candida releases alcohol into the body. In fact, people can be slightly inebriated from candida alcohol release all day without them even touching a drop of alcohol. This can be called dry drunk syndrome. People can then become slightly addicted to the alcohol released by the candida. Therefore, when people try to stop the sugar and carbohydrate intake, they can literally have alcohol withdrawal symptoms, ranging from shakes, insomnia, sickness, and other common alcohol withdrawal symptoms. This is one of the reasons why alcoholics and many former alcoholics are addicted to eating sugars. It is because they feed candida, which then releases more alcohol into the body. Slow metabolism. Most people with candida are slow metabolizers. While their cells are more acidic, their intercellular spaces are too alkaline. Their bodies do not generate enough acid end products of metabolism such as lactic acid. Calcium, an alkaline forming element, also builds up to the alkalinity. Candida thrives in an alkaline environment and becomes able to evade tissues and causes serious illness. Slow metabolizers are often deficient in hydrochloric acid. Stomach acid normally kills candida. This is one of the reasons why acidophilus, an acid forming organism, often helps alleviate candida. Copper. We have talked about copper earlier, but we will talk about it again because of its importance. Copper is the body's natural antifungi agent. Farmers often spray copper sulfate on fruits and vegetables to kill yeast and molds. Water departments may add copper compounds to drinking water for the same reasons. Copper may be added to swimming pools and hot tubs to control yeast. Copper favours aerobic metabolism, which disables yeast. Everyone with candida has copper imbalance. Most often, copper is present but not available to the body. This is due to deficiency of ceruloplasmin, a copper binding protein. Adrenal hormones are required to produce ceruloplasmin. Underactive, exhausted adrenal glands or sluggish liver activity causes a decrease in ceruloplasmin production. As a result, copper is not properly bound and is less available to the body. Until the copper adrenal liver condition is corrected, candida is difficult to control. Medications. Antibiotic overuse ranks high as a cause for candida. Acidophilus and other friendly yeasts help maintain an acidic intestinal environment. Antibiotics often kill acidophilus. E. coli and other bacteria replace the friendly organisms and produce an alkaline environment in which candida thrives. Antibiotics are also toxic for the liver, impairing its ability to produce ceruloplasmin. They can persist in the liver for years. They should be used only as an absolute last resort and not for viral infections. Millions of pounds of antibiotics are fed to animals. Commercially grown meats, poultry, milk and eggs contain antibiotic residues. Although this occurs less today, it is best to buy meat, poultry and dairy products from sources that do not contain antibiotic in animal feed. Animals raised in a healthful manner rarely require antibiotics. 
Antacids and other drugs that reduce acid may worsen candida by creating a deficiency of stomach acid. Ulcers and heartburn are often due to wheat allergy or factors other than excess stomach acid. Other toxic substances. Excessive mercury often accompanies copper toxicity. Mercury can stimulate the thyroid which causes adrenal imbalance. Several years are needed to remove excess mercury. Cadmium is a highly toxic metal that interferes with zinc needed to balance copper and required for proper functioning of the adrenals. Cadmium also accumulates in the liver and can impair its ability to synthesize ceruloplasmin. Lead toxicity interferes with calcium metabolism. This can slow the adrenals by altering the electrolyte imbalance. Toxic chemicals found in the home, air, water and food also accumulate in the liver, impairing its ability to produce ceruloplasmin. Improper bowel flora is extremely common and contributes to candida infections. Much of the problem is due to antibiotic use and constant ingestion of small doses of antibiotics found in drinking water and commercial animal products. Low fibre in the diet, food additives, parasitic infections and stress also impair bowel activity. Often in pockets in the colon, also harbour bacteria that interfere with normal bowel flora. Constipation also aggravates candida infection. One may, however, be constipated even if one has daily bowel movements. Food should pass through the intestines within 48 hours. When it is delayed, harmful organisms have more time to multiply and generate toxins. To test bowel transit time, eat some beetroot at one meal and note how long it takes for the red colour to show up in the stool. Extra fibre and an improved diet will often decrease bowel transit time. Candida correction. Dietary change is the most important, especially minimising all sweets including fruit juices. This includes reducing cookies, cakes, ice cream, pastries, honey, rice syrup, sugary drinks and other products. Stevia and artificial sweeteners are better as they do not contain sugars, though they present other problems. Reducing grains is also important, especially wheat and spelt, and at times rye, oats and barley. When I was trying to tackle my candida issues, I had to temporarily remove all grains from my diet. I also had to remove all milk and even more carby vegetables such as carrots, peas, parsnips and others. Although I was an extreme example, I have noticed that some people have to do this also. Stopping all fruit eating is also helpful. Although fruit in many ways has healthy nutrients, overall we find that they can slow down healing and they can definitely interfere with candida overgrowth problems. Reduce dried beans such as pintos, lentils, black beans and peanuts. Peanut butter is very sweet and best avoided. Toasted almond, cashew or sunflower seed butters are much better, although I had to reduce these as well when I was tackling my candida issues. It is best to eliminate all fermented foods such as cheese, wine, pickles and yeasted breads. If you follow the nutritional balancing program with us, you'll be given advice on what the best diet is for healing candida. Lifestyle Lifestyle plays a critical role. Reducing stress rests the adrenal glands and helps improve copper metabolism. Plenty of rest and sleep are also important, as lack of rest stresses the adrenal glands. Stimulant use such as caffeine or heavy exercise decimates the adrenal glands. Improving eating habits and positive emotions and attitudes reduce stress and promote healthy digestion. Deep breathing and good posture assist oxygenation of the body, which also inhibits candida. Nutritional balancing. Correcting slow metabolism, copper imbalance, weak adrenals and an over-alkaline body chemistry requires a hair mineral analysis. When performed and interpreted properly, it can assess body chemistry and guide recommendations for diet, supplements and detoxification procedures. The process can take several years and greatly improves general health. Many times, candida infection is just one of many imbalances contributing to poor health. It is often a symptom of deeper systemic problems that ought to be addressed. 
The advantage of a nutritional balancing program is it is not a symptomatic approach. It addresses many imbalances and deeper causes at the same time. Other powerful additions people can make to tackling candida are coffee enemas, sauna therapy, adding extra garlic into meals and more. If you would like to begin a nutritional balancing program, please email me at lewis at deephealingspace.com. Alternatively, you can buy a hair mineral analysis and interpretation from our advanced hair analysis app, which also tests for candida overgrowth trends over at www.hairanalysis.report forward slash buy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and we will see you next time.